you've come here today and you've got a load of stuff at this table for me folks what do you have at all what's your connection to these objects both of you the connection to these objects is uh, my father was in the 19 well 1916 onwards and um, he came in in 1917 and uh, he was in the War of Independence and there's a lot of stuff I have kept at home from my time and minded it so uh, it's all displayed here in front of us as much as we can. And what was the man's name? Andy Maloney at Springfield, um, Claire and Clonmel. And Gertie, you did a load of research on Andy. I did. Um, I didn't know the man because he, he died in 1979, but I, COVID, I suppose, when it came in that March, um, it opened a window for me because um, I was unable to work, so I actually put all this, I, I did a booklet on on my, my father-in-law. Um, we had a lot of bits and pieces at home, we put them all together. He was born in 1899, and um, he was 60 years of age when Martin was born. That's right. So he fought in the War of Independence and he fought in the Civil War. Um, we did a lot of research. Uh, we spoke to an awful lot of historians. We had a lot of data at home. I didn't really know what it was or what it meant or where it came from. So, yeah, we gathered the information and then I, we put this booklet together, which is all factual. Um, he was going to school in Rockwell College and that was rumoured. Well, hadn't he gone to school or did he go to school? So. We found that out initially from the census and then from there we went to Rockwell College and um, his photograph was on the wall in Rockwell College as a student and they uh, also won the Rock Cup in 1916. So it all started really with Rockwell College. And then I went to a historian in Cashel, Bob O'Dwyer I think was his name, That's right. with all this uh, paraphernalia here and he was able to identify Martin's dad in one of the pictures so actually his name appears in quite a few books so i got very excited with all this information but i suppose i had three small children and it was only then when COVID came that i actually put all the data to get together and it was only at that stage that the military archives released the information so i'm sure we thought we'd won the lotto when we got his statement and everything so yeah um th th these are his medals here um this medal was for active service you can tell by this bar here in the writing across um, this medal was given then for the commemoration 50 years and this is another medal of his with no ribbon on it which was uh, also given for service bar across this medal here means actually that he fought uh, he was in combat um, if it didn't have the bar you were in other service but you didn't actually um, fight so Martin, if you want to talk to Michael then about the gun. Yeah, this gun was found in a, in a trunk which my mother kept for years and she had patterns of um, her dresses in and she had everything, she thrown everything into it along with this gun and this gun was rusty. It was obviously out in the weather for a while before I came into the house and then I came on it as a young age. And um, so I went about trying to mine it the best I could and uh, then there was a scare one time at the bar of the fox was going around Tipperary and uh, of course everyone's telling me I'm due something in your house and you have to get rid of it so I went out and hid it in a rabbit burrow but weeks had passed and I forgot what rabbit burrow I hid it in so it took me a long time to find it so I found it again but it was more rusty so I cleaned it up the best I could and then I got it decommissioned which you see is decommissioned there and um, obviously blocked up and the uh, pin is cut top on it and so so I may never probably use it again it's a Wembley 45 um, and uh, that's it. It's fairly good condition, but I'm sure there's other ones in better condition. But that's what we have at the moment, anyway. And then, obviously, um, what I have as well is a medal. Does my niece have a medal that was made out of a half a crown? And he flattened it, flattened it flat. And he made it, he printed it all with a nail, seemingly. That's what I'm told. Uh, a nail and a hammer. A nail and a hammer, yes. A nail and a hammer. And he made it out. He made it that. That's the back and front of it. I don't know they're shaped in, but that is actually the back and front of it. There's one medal. And uh, this was in 1922 when he was jailed. And um, he was caught with other, other um, his companions, and they were caught around Rose Green somewhere. And they were um, brought away. And um, the, that's, that's, that's mostly what I have now at the moment, but there's other stuff there as well. And where was he imprisoned? 
uh, we are still trying to find out at the moment that's why we're probably here and we're still trying to find a bit more because only now things are starting to come out about the whole scenario yeah he was in and prison from 1922 to 1924 um so we have exhausted a lot of avenues but we're still not getting the information so um yeah. we spoke to john here today and he's might be able to point us in the right direction um but what was interesting about the research that we were doing was the way everything matched up we have dan breen's um, witness statement here we printed that off the internet and he speaks about martin's dad on the statement and then we have the statement of uh, the captain, Captain Paddy Ahern, was a neighbour of Martin's dad. Yes, yes. And he mentions Martin's dad on his statement. And then on Martin's dad's statements, he's talking about Dan Breen and Paddy Ahern. So the whole thing all absolutely all knitted together yeah, for us. Yeah, it's to come together. Um, we have some pictures as well, which were hanging on the wall. And still hang on the wall in the house in Tonmoka. Now these these were all pictures uh, that um, were in what we call in uh, them times a parlour. Um, everyone called it a sitting room now. We, we were always told it was a parlour. It was only open for mess. They used to have mess once a year. Probably I was avoiding it anyway when I was my age. But um, this is um, obviously Dennis Lacey. And this is a lovely picture. This is always there. But this was rolled up in a roll. It wasn't hanging. It was just in a roll. And so we got it. Um, my wife, Gertie, got it. Um, into a frame. Yeah, your niece did it for your breeder, uh, didn't she? A breeder, yeah, breeder, yeah. breeder, breeder, who landed on them now. And so it was the between them, they got it all done. And this was we have now is this picture of Lacey. And this is just the 1916 Rising, um, the GPO in Dublin, another picture. Yeah. But again, breeder um, got this framed and she did all that work for us, for yes. which we were very so, grateful. Yeah. This, is, this also was a, a, in a roll. And rolled up and put into the famous cupboard we used to call it then and to left in a drawer and the drawer was even so it was never open it was even seized i i opened it and um that that uh, cabinet actually is above now in uh in, in in dora castle the cabinet of the house of, of our house now. So that was in i suppose the last the information we found too came from a trunk in martin's home place where we still live now today Again, this is the one now that got a bit damp and maybe a few mice stuck on it. And that time, as you can see here, they did a bit of chewing. And uh, this is the one. And here he is here. We're pointed out. As Gertie was pointing out, he's here. Um, yeah, the historian um, Bob and Cashel identified him yes. there for us. And, um, and a lot of the information actually was in your man's trunk. Yes. It's referred yeah. to in the book there yes. that I wrote. Yes. Um, there was this very big trunk at home belonged to Martin's mum. And when I got married to Martin, I didn't know any, what was in this trunk. And I say I didn't touch it maybe for a lot of time because it wasn't, I felt it personal. But we went through it and we found a lot of information with regard to Martin's dad. That's where the medals were and the gun was there, plus um, a lot of different um, certificates and uh, that. So um, I suppose Nelly, Martin's mother, has to get the credit for saving all this information. As much as she could, yeah. But yes. when we opened the trunk, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was yeah, a gift, the, really, that yeah. we hadn't um, discarded it or nobody else had. And Martin, can I ask you a question as well? No growing up, did your father or mother talk about this or was it put away like when you were growing up? It was a hidden a bit. It was a, it was a con, a con, it was possibly, I tried to get a bit of information out of him, but he wasn't coming forth with it. He was uh, very tight-lipped about it. Um, he might say a little bit when he was on his Indies battle of Paddy. He might say a little bit of it, all right, but you didn't understand what he was saying. And then again, you must take, like he died when I was 19, and uh, I was probably asking him questions when I was 12, and he was probably saying to me, look, you don't need to know what your age, you know, and you, look, listen, child, go away. And he didn't know that. But he often says, he often says to me that he slept in straw with Dave, um, I often had him come out of that and he used to have weekend nightmares at night time because I often had him roaring and shouting and I can imagine now I know really why and um, but uh, yeah he, there was often things he'd come out like I stepped on straw and the one thing he always said Dick Mulcahy used to pay for uh, whatever he meant by that I don't know <laughs> whatever Dick Mulcahy paid for I don't know but anyway um, of course Dick, Richard Mulcahy was uh, obviously prominent and um, 
but things like that, yeah. He never really spoke about it, and it was, it was a pity, really, you know, that we didn't get the information out of him. But maybe there was things he didn't want to say. You know, there was obviously in that time there was cousin against cousin, brothers against brothers, as we know now, as I knew in later years, which I took didn't know when I was younger, obviously. Um, and things that we took for granted, maybe. But, yeah, he went through a bit of a hell, I suppose, all right. And uh, you wouldn't blame the man for the way he was. He lost his hand when he was... Um, about 50, maybe 45, 50 in the trash machine. And of course, that was another blow to him. And uh, he took it from the elbow down. And um, his right hand was, yeah, his right hand. And um, so he, he kind of had to pull himself together from that as well. So um, obviously, I wasn't born then. And I was obviously born in the 60s, 1960. And um, so I always, uh, people ask me, how could you be so young? And I used to say to them, I often made out my sister dropped me in. And he was slagging my sister over us, but uh, obviously, I, yes, I'm a full-blown Maloney, as we know now. But, yeah, yeah, it is, it is, yeah it's, it's, it's something I would have liked to know more about, but now, obviously, the chance is gone with him. And my mother used to say a bit sorry, but not too much either. I mean, she came from uh, Killinall up to Palmuka. She actually, because she owned, owned um, Palmuka Po. And uh, she came all, all that time way up. She was up to mind the ranch. She was sent up at 16. To mind the rent, uh, my rent fell into a fire. She used to get her leptic fits and fell into a fire and burned her eyes out. So she was sent up at a young age to mind her for good. That was it. She you never know, turned to, to um, kill her. And uh, that was that was things then, you know. So and then she met your dad. Then she met my dad, obviously, and he was that yeah. bit older than her. And then obviously they, they obviously got married, and there's a lovely photo there even of them. Yeah, they got we, married in 1930s. 1937. Seven, yeah, just um, a lovely photo, a unique photo of the old style of the dresses, the mother especially. Yeah. And that and the hat, the father, that should be still around. We can't find it. Some of some of our crowd have it, but we can't find it. But that hat is still around. And uh, yeah, that's him there. But, um, Did you ever hear anything about? Was his own mother or father involved? Or his uh, brother, uh, Dan Dan Maloney, was uh, supposed to be involved. Not to a, in a big way that he was, um, but he was involved with in it because when he died, there's a letter there from Dan Breen, somewhere in that book, a letter um, uh, from Dan Breen, and you know, and he's dead, and uh, obviously he was sympathising with, um, with Andy, and uh, that is there. There's the letter there, Dan Breen wrote to Andy Maloney, sympathising with him on the death of his dad. Uh, his, da his brother Dan. Of, uh, of his brother Dan, and that was uh, 1953. So we did find um, this emergency medal. Yes. And we think that that belongs to, to um, Andy's brother, Dan. Dan, we're not sure yet, but we we're have to... We're not sure. We have to find that more information on that. Yeah, and this is all... Uh, and hopefully, you know, hopefully that we do find out uh, who uh, owns it. And, um, you know, that's, that's history again, and it's more information that we didn't have. And uh, that... So. I mean, are you enjoying going back and finding this stuff? Yes, um, well, I say, Gertie, my wife is more enjoyable in China than I am, I suppose. Of course, you know, she's, she's taking it all on and she's doing all the work, really. Uh, along with, as you saw, the, the frames on that for my niece that done them as well, to give her a hand to them. But um, yeah, she's enjoying it more so than me, I suppose, because she, uh, she's taking it in. I wouldn't be a retainer. I, I know I wouldn't retain things, so she actually retains a lot more than me. But I do think that I never had a huge interest in history. But um, when I spoke to um, Bob O'Dwyer, sort of Bob Dwyer in Cashel, he's now passed away. Um, I was fascinated with the information that he was able to give me about all the paraphernalia I have here. And then I kind of took it on from there. But um, I suppose I'm very thrilled with this, what I call this, the book. It's called The Boss Man. There's about 70 pages in it. That I put this together during COVID, and I'm very pleased about that because it's all factual. There's no hearsay in this book. It's um, to the gospel, and um, and you give it to all the. There's eight eight of us in the family. There's uh, six brothers and two sisters, and all the family got one each, which got a middle for them. And yeah. uh, and to grant that they have it for their family, and they can, you know, they have history, and just kind of keeping it going. Like we are here now, and you're asking us questions, and you're trying to keep it going, and. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, it's history that what might be forgotten and hopefully it won't. <laughs>